CA Privileged Identity Manager provides organizations with privileged identity management that can offer you powerful control over your organization's privileged users to reduce the risk of compliance failures or costly security breaches. In this video, you will learn how to install the CA Privileged Identity Manager Enterprise Management Server on Linux. You first need to install third-party software such as JBoss and then install the Enterprise Management Server. As a prerequisite, make sure that release 12.9 build ISO files are downloaded, mounted, and ready for triggering the installation. Let's install third-party components from the mounted location. Here, the third-party components are JBoss, JDK, and Unlimited JCE policy. Enter this command to install JDK using the RPM file. We can observe that JDK is being installed on the specified location. Append the JDK or bin path to the system path. Enter this command to set the path using the bash shell. If required, we can set the path permanently by adding this command to your shell startup file. Execute the Java version command to check the version of Java installed on the system. To install a supported JBoss version, extract the JBoss archive to the specified directory. Here, the JBoss 4.2.3 GA zip file has been copied and extracted to the opt directory. We can observe that the JBoss installation is in process. We can observe that the JBoss has been installed successfully. Enter this command to open the in the server XML file. We need to change the port number from 8080 to 18080 and then change the redirect port from 8443 to 18443 in server XML file. Let's change the naming port from 1099 to 11099 in JBoss minimal XML file. Next, change the naming port from 1099 to 11099 in JBoss service XML file. Enter this command to copy the unlimited Java cryptography extension policy directory from the third party components software to a temporary location. This contains the script file and the associated jar files. Let's run this script. Enter the associated JRE path. Enter the path where you want to back up existing JRE policy files. Enter the path to the unlimited JCE policy JDK7 jar files. We can observe that the files are successfully copied to the specified directory. Next, enter this command to change the maximum number of open files to 10,000. This avoids the failures during the installation. Let's verify that the RPM build package from your Linux distribution is installed. Here, the Enterprise Management Server requires the RPM build package to install the Advanced Policy Management option on the server. This completes the installation of third-party software. Let's now start installing the Enterprise Management Server. Navigate to the location where the ENTM installer is mounted. Enter this command to launch the ENTM installer. This accepts the license agreement and starts the installation in the console mode. Select the locale to English by entering 2. We can observe that the console mode installation has been started. Select the Enterprise Management Installation Type. Here, we have chosen Primary Enterprise Management Server as this is the first installation. Provide the location where the product will be installed. Next, specify the location of an existing JDK installation. In certain cases, 
you may come across the unable to install the Java virtual machine included with this installer message. This message can be ignored. We now need to provide the JBoss application server settings. Press enter to continue with the default settings. Accept the default Tomcat application server settings to continue with the installation. Next enter the communication password. Specify the database type. Here, we have chosen the Microsoft SQL Server to store the database information. Next, provide the host name, port number, database name, and username to define the database connection, and then provide the password. Select the user type to Active Directory. Next. Define the Active Directory information by providing relevant details. The Administration Information section allows you to provide the System Manager details. This is the user ID that is used for administering PIM. Now, review the pre-installation summary. We can observe that the CA Privileged Identity Manager Enterprise Manager has been installed successfully. Once the CAPIM has been installed on the system, next start the Privileged Identity Manager services. Check for the status of the services. This completes the installation of CA Privileged Identity Manager Enterprise Manager. Thank you. For more information, visit www.ca.com/education.